Ladies and gentlemen, what is going on guys? Sergeant Moose here back with another Evil Dead The Game video and today guys I want to talk a little bit about the dev stream that just ended a few minutes ago previewing what's going to happen during tomorrow's update. Of course, you know, we're getting Mia Allen, we're getting David Allen, and we're getting the Plague Bringer Demon. Now a lot was showed on stream. A lot was not showed on stream as far as patch notes and things like that, but there are a few things that we know so far. So let's jump into it. All right, guys, first and foremost, I want to talk about Mia Allen first. Now, we didn't really get a very good look at the skill trees. Actually, I don't even know if they showed the skill trees at all for any of the characters. I know they did briefly show it for the Plaguebringer, but not a whole lot uh, to kind of break everything down for each character. But from what we saw on screen for Mia Allen, the first thing that we do know is that she has a machete mastery. So obviously in her early concept art that we saw we saw her holding a machete of course we didn't know that that was going to be a mastery now we do she is going to be a master of the machete which should be pretty interesting now to break down her abilities um what they mentioned before regarding her abilities we were pretty much correct on that now just if there's any confusion out there mia can be possessed guys she is able to be possessed but what her ability can do is counteract that. Uh, and basically, essentially, she pops her ability whenever she has high fear. She cannot be possessed while she's in the duration of that ability. And she also outputs more damage, but at the cost of she takes more damage when her fear is high as well. So she does become a bit of a glass cannon, but also it definitely puts a big spin on the warrior class. And she does look like she's going to be very, very effective. Of course, they did have a few people playing her in the streams. Um, most of them, I think, were level one on the skill tree because they were playing a beta build. But even so, she was still outputting a ton of damage at the end, uh, end game match report and things like that. So it does look like she's going to be a very effective damage outputting warrior. However, she may also be slightly uh, a bit of a glass cannon, kind of like Scotty, uh, maybe a little bit more squishy than Scotty. I don't know. We'll see. Of course, we're going to have to look at the skill tree, which we'll get in tomorrow once we're able to see that. We didn't get the liberty of uh, taking a look at it just yet. But uh, yeah, so that's pretty much the breakdown of Mia. Pretty much what we expected. She's your typical high damage warrior, but also a little bit squishy in the process. So you have to be a little more careful with her. Um, as opposed to, say, AOD Ash or Henry the Red. Now, next, guys, I'm going to talk a little bit about David Allen. Now, my predictions for him were completely wrong, um, almost entirely wrong. I, uh, for one, and I know a lot of other folks did too, thought that maybe he would have uh, a sort of a defibrillation machine that he could revive players back from the dead. That is definitely 100% not the case. He has nothing like that. So I want to talk a little bit about his ability. He kind of his ability kind of reminds me of Evil Dead uh, One Ash, the support Ash. Um, he has the ability to light a fire on the fly. So anytime his ability's up, he can drop a fire anywhere he wants, and of course, it will reduce any teammates within the aura. It'll reduce their fear. Also, now don't quote me on this, guys. I tried to follow as closely as I could. Obviously, we'll know for certain tomorrow. I think it applies some buffs to the survivors in the Aura 2, whether it's damage output or um, something like that. Maybe Shemps provide more health. I, I don't know exactly what the buffs are. Forgive me for that. I tried to follow along as best I could. But I know it does provide other buffs aside from just fear resistance. So if any of you guys caught that, please let me know in the comments. Of course, we'll know again tomorrow. But David Allen does have the ability to drop a fire on the fly. Now, again, the survivors playing um, in these games today... They weren't high level. Most of them were level one survivors going in. Uh, so we didn't get to see them kind of like at their full effects of their abilities and things like that. But we did get a pretty good idea. So David seems like he's going to be a pretty solid uh, support. Obviously, he's going to have the nail gun mastery. And speaking of the nail gun mastery, I want to get in a little bit to the weapons, guys. So we have two new weapons coming to the game. So if you're familiar with the 2013 Evil Dead film, you'll know of the syringes. Of course, Olivia uh, providing these syringes to Mia to uh, combat her withdrawals and things like that. Obviously, uh, we know what she does to Eric in the film with the syringes. Well, 
These are going to be a usable weapon in the game, which absolutely blew my mind, guys. I did not expect this whatsoever. And honestly, to me, they look a little silly in combat because they're really big, but they're really cool, man, and they seem like they do a lot of damage. In my opinion, I'm assuming they're going to be two-handed dismemberment weapons because you have two of them, one for each hand, um, so it's uh, definitely, the animations are definitely nothing like you've seen in this game before. Um, really cool weapon there. I'm interested to see, you know, how legendary ones can... Uh, how they can fare with, you know, a, a high dismemberment, you know, two-handed build or something like that. I feel like they'll be very, very effective. So we have the syringes or as our new melee weapon. And of course, as most of you know, we have the nail gun. Now, the nail gun really surprised me. I saw a few of the guys using it on stream today. I didn't see any specs for it or anything like that. But just, uh, just looking at how it was used, it does appear that it is going to do a ton of damage. It does shoot fast as we expected. However, I did not expect it would do as much damage as it does, especially with headshots, uh, things like that. So again, with all of this stuff, guys, this is just kind of like a first glance of what we saw. Obviously, we're going to dig deeper into it tomorrow when we actually have our hands on it. But it does appear that the nail gun's going to be more effective than what most people thought it was going to be, especially in the hands of David. Um, and honestly, I, I could see a hunter being very, very effective with the nail gun as well. So there's that. So we have the, um, the syringes and the nail gun as the new weapons. Uh, of course, the weapon mastery for Mia, which I was very surprised was, was the machete. And David is the nail gun. But I don't... As far as Mia, a lot of people were wondering if she's able to use the chainsaw. I, I did not see her use one or attempt to use one today in any of the matches. I don't know if Saber commented on it, uh, you know, confirming whether or not she can or not. I'm going to say no. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to say no. I don't think she'll be able to use the chainsaw, sadly. But uh, there's always a chance. I, like I said, I don't know. We won't know until tomorrow. Now, moving on, guys, to the Plague Bringer. Now, this is one that I don't know a whole lot about because we only got to see, I think, two games of uh, actually being behind the wheel of the Plague Bringer. Uh, so Hinky was playing it, and I believe he was playing a level 45 Plague Bringer. So he was playing a fully max Plague, plague Bringer that he was, uh, you know, kind of messing around with the skills. Obviously, he'll be fine-tuning them in the future and things like that as well as everybody else. But... Plaguebringer is going to bring an interesting mechanic, and I want to talk about one mechanic that she has, guys, that could definitely uh, change things up, shake things up within the game, and that is her cauldron. Now, as far as what her cauldron does is that, that whenever her units are inside of the cauldron, um, I believe, now don't quote me on this, I believe it makes their balance bar very, very strong or maybe completely indestructible altogether. Um, not exactly sure about that, but I know it does affect the balance bar of the basics, and I think it does other things too. Again, we're going to have to dive into it, but um, just at a first glance, the cauldron does appear like it is. Uh, it can be very difficult to destroy. It's not a flawless, guys. Like it definitely has some health. It can be destroyed if it's targeted, if it's focused, you know, by the survivors. It can be destroyed probably pretty quickly, but. It's going to be, of course, kind of difficult. You know, you're fighting enemies inside. You're fighting possessed units inside of the aura um, on top of that. And plus, you have to break the cauldron all at the same time. But the, the main thing about the cauldron that really got me is it is gigantic. It's huge. And what I mean by huge is it is huge enough to block doorways, um, which I think a lot of demons, including myself, will probably take ad advantage of. Infernal energy, <clears throat> you're ready to possess some units. Uh, you see survivors in a building maybe with only one way out. Block that doorway with the cauldron. Block them inside, and, I mean, it can be a disaster for the survivors. It, it's appearing that that's how um, a lot of people may play this thing, and that's really, really cool. Very interesting concept, but, yes, uh, the cauldron does offer a ton of um, uh, uh, buffs for the demon. And uh, it looks like it's going to be very, very useful, you know, for Plaguebringer mains and things like that. Uh, talk about her elites a little bit. Now, they do, her elites are beefy. Of course, they're the, the Pit Witch from Army of Darkness. Um, at a first glance of them, it appears they have a stomp. They run pretty fast. Um, also, upon being killed, 
Now, I don't know if this is every elite or just possessed elites. I don't know exactly. But it does appear that they leave a toxic sludge on the ground once they're killed, which slows movement inside of that sludge uh, for the duration. I'm not sure. Uh, things like that. But very interesting uh, change of pace there on the elite units. And the basic units, they seem to operate sort of like the Necromancer's basic units. Um, they have different animations. They have different weapons. They do have a ranged lunge that I saw um, earlier, on the, or earlier on the stream. And it does seem like it has a very, very long range for that lunge, which also could be interesting and shake things up. Um, you know, cause survivors to really time their dodges and things like that. So the basics do seem to be improved. Um, so Plaguebringer seems like she's going to be a very strong demon class. Um, I saw a lot of people in the chat uh, explaining that, you know, at the first notice that she seems kind of weak. But, uh, of course, I think that's going to come down to experience with her, you know, working on the skill tree and things like that. Because to me, she seems like she's going to be a very, very solid killer uh, demon, I should say. And as for the boss herself, the old she-bitch... She looks absolutely amazing. She stole the show for me, guys. Aside from Mia, Mia was absolutely badass, too, with that little red dress. Whew. But um, the, <laughs> the demon, the boss demon, she has a ranged attack, which essentially you can turn this demon into a freaking hunter, man. She can... Uh, she throws... I don't, I don't even know exactly what it is, but she throws something. It looks like... Uh, like discs is like a like a cone. It's kind of like discs in a cone. I don't know. I'm trying to explain it, guys. But she can launch these at guys continuously, um, and it deals significant damage as well. Um, so it seems like it's going to take some timing, some experience to learn how to dodge that kind of thing. Um, obviously, her with the cauldron down it can be devastating as well. And she does appear that she can reanimate from the dead now i'm not exactly sure how that works i think i saw it once happen on the stream today um so i apparently she completely died and then she literally rose back up from the dead and she fought again <laughs> so that could be trouble especially on the book man that that could be intense with a cauldron on the book and her reanimating. I'm not sure how that triggers or anything like that just yet. We'll find out tomorrow, but she can reanimate from the dead. I don't think she has like, you know, as good of health whenever she reanimates, but I feel like maybe she has bigger, you know, higher damage output or something like that. But she looks like she's gonna be a problem uh, for survivors. So for survivor mains out there, if you face a good plague bringer, you might run into some trouble, at least until you figure out how to play against it, because she looks like she's going to be trouble. So we have that, guys. And also, uh, like I said, we don't have any patch notes yet. Uh, we're not going to see any of that tomorrow. I think there's going to be a lot of different things in the patch notes. Um, some things that a, a few people mentioned, I think it was... Uh, I, I don't want to mention any names, but I think that there may be a... <clears throat> excuse me, reduced... Shemps and amulet amount in the maps. I don't know if that's 100% going to be the case, but it did look like that today on the stream. It looked like the survivors were having a very hard time finding heals. Now, that could just be coincidence. Maybe nothing's changed at all. Maybe they just had some bad RNG. I don't know, but we're going to keep an eye on that for sure. We're going to check some, you know, typical locations and things like that to see if they're still spawning in the same spots as they usually do. But uh, we have that. There is going to be reduced cars on the map. Now, from what I saw on the stream today, it didn't look like anything like overly significant with the cars uh, being reduced, uh, you know, in terms of how, you know, how many spawn. But uh, they are going to be reduced in some fashion. Don't ask me, you know, how that's going to benefit the demon at all. You know, because I know a lot of demon mains have been calling for reduced cars, um, <clears throat> you know, cough you know especially the demons that you know win 99.9% .9 of their games but are still calling for buffs for demons uh, that you know just kidding about that but anyway um, so the cars have been uh, nerfed as far as spawns how many of them spawn and it does appear 
at the book. Of course, we've uh, heard talk about this before, that the cars will get destroyed at the book. Now, I don't think that's been tested today, but I believe that is definitely going to be implemented. Uh, so if you try to block the book with the cars, which I think most people, including myself, thinks, thinks that's very scummy, um, they are going to take repeated damage until I think they disappear or something like that. Uh, so that'll no longer be an issue. Also, one of the biggest talked about things today, got, or for, I don't know, for about a month, maybe more than a month, is duplicating shemps and amulets. That is no longer going to be a thing, thank goodness. And that is a very good, that's a very good thing. It's probably one of the best things they could possibly put in this patch. So just to be clear, according to Saber, duplication of shemps and amulets will no longer be a thing with this patch. Praise the Lord, hallelujah, this is what we've all been waiting for. And a few little side notes, guys, I did want to mention that uh, it has been mentioned in the stream that Henry the Red has been nerfed. Who expected that? Henry the Red, I believe his ability will have a longer cooldown. And as someone who enjoys playing Henry a lot, um, but also plays the demon a lot, I think that is a good thing personally. So I don't know how much longer his cooldown is going to be. I, if I had to estimate, I would say at, at least probably another 30 seconds. I don't, may, they may even go a minute. I don't know. But we do know that it is going to be a longer cooldown for Henry's ability. So Henry's still going to be very, very effective, guys. There's no doubt about that. But yes, his ability did need a little bit of tweaking, in my opinion. And also, I heard talk about Ed Getley getting a nerf as well. How true that is, I don't know. But I do hear Ed is going to get a nerf. How is he going to get a nerf? I don't know that either. I can't imagine it would be a nerf to his flashlight. I mean, that, you know, it is very, uh, his flashlight is very significant, but I can't see that rendering needing a nerf. Uh, maybe it has something to do with his collector uh, passive. I, I don't know exactly, but I think Ed Getley is going to get a nerf. But as far as that stuff goes, guys, uh, we just kind of got a real vague look at all of the characters today. Lots lots of fun. They all look really cool. They all look like they're going to fit in just perfectly with the game and, of course, with synergizing with teammates and things like that. Plaguebringer looks like an absolute freaking badass. She just looks cool. She has awesome abilities, and she seems like she's going to be a strong demon. So, with that said, guys, that's all I have for you today. Uh, a kind of like a post-game report or whatever you want to call it we just kind of wanted to go over a few of uh, kind of previewing what they've done on the stream today so we'll find uh, tomorrow we're going to do a tons of breakdown videos i think i'm going to do mia and david first maybe i don't maybe i'll do plague bringer first i don't know but definitely definitely going to be doing videos on all of those guys i'm going to be doing videos on the patch notes and different nerfs things like that buffs whatever so definitely check back for that, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you're excited, as much excited as I am for the patch, the update tomorrow. Going to be really freaking cool. But with that said, guys, if you, enjoyed the, if you enjoyed the video, please feel free to drop a like. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. For all things Evil Dead, the game, my name's Sergeant Moose. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll see you on the next video.